Hello once again YouTube, Chris the Nightbringer here bringing you some Starmade action. Holy shit, I got some stuff to talk to you about today and I have some other things uh, about newsy type stuff that I'll be throwing at your faces soon. So, uh, to get started, uh, as you can see I'm in front of the Venture. Uh, pretty damn cool uh, if you ask me, uh, because that is fucking cool. Don't, don't question my judgment of whether things are cool or not. I, I will behead you. Um, not really though, because, I mean, bed hangs pretty cool and all, but I'm not going to behead you because I need you to watch my videos. Uh, so, <laughs> fucking tangent there, holy shit. Um, here we can see the venture. Uh, I don't know if I've really worked on it since the last video. I definitely did a few things, but I don't know how much progress I really made. But, uh, I have to say that I'm kind of stopped working on it, and I'll tell you why. Basically... Uh, when I set out to make all the EVE ships, the one and true goal that I had when it came to that was making accurate, life-sized, well not life-sized, but um, accurately sized EVE ships. Proportionally correct, and really cool, uh, fully furnished, uh, ready to go uh, into somebody's server because uh, they're all going to be up for download. That's really awesome. And then I came to the conclusion that I also wanted to make all of the modules for EVE ships. Not every single one because in terms of star made mechanics and eve mechanics the two don't cross and fit each other exactly so not all of the modules will be um, working things like you know em wards or you know kinetic damage uh boosters or something i don't know stuff like that that just you know doesn't really make sense in star made because there's different types of damages and even that don't really work in star made because right now there's only one type of gun and it might change in the future might not but the problem that I ran into was, oh, oh, real quick, let me just explain. If you don't know what a module is, it's basically anything you put on the ship to affect its overall stats. It's basically gear for a ship. Uh, a turret, for example, is a high slot module. Uh, something like an afterburner is like a medium slot module. Uh, so all of those things affect your ship and it's basically gear. Now, like I said, the problem that I ran into when it came to making these modules is that I need to make the module as impressive as I can so that it actually potentially affects your ship in a way. If I add on afterburners, I want the ship to accelerate a little bit faster. Um, if I add on something like a cloaking unit, I actually wanted to be able to cloak, which I highly doubt will happen because of the size of these ships and the size of the interiors, but whatever. Um, you get the idea, is that I want these to actually have an effect on the ship, to actually give them bonuses or non-bonuses. I don't know, depending on how you fit the ship. But, the problem that I encountered is that I need to find out the maximum size that I can make the module and have it still fit every single ship internally. And that's where I run into a problem, because I haven't built every single ship yet that these modules will be fitting themselves to. I have literally only built the Venture, some of the Badger, what, mostly the Hull, uh, and Shuttles, which don't even have fucking modules. I've literally done nothing in terms of getting close to that goal, which means I can't produce modules, which means I can't finish ships. I can't determine how much space I need for modules inside the ships until I have built more ships and figure out the overall amount of space inside of each of the ships, each of the ships that I make. It kinda sucks. So, I've kind of run into a standstill when it comes to all of the ships. After a certain point, I won't be able to finish them until I finish a majority of ships from EVE. Um, or at least the majority of a specific ship type, like a frigate or a cruiser. It kind of sucks, but at the same time, it makes sense and, you know, I'm kind of okay with it. Uh, mostly because... Um, I'm still going to be releasing them for download, you guys can still get them. A lot of the stuff that is going to be in the ship, like power and thrusters, are in the ship right now. It's just that I need to not finish, you know, completely furnishing the interiors so that I can figure out how the module stuff is going to work. Um, so that being said, uh, you know, things like uh, the EVE uh, Venture are going to be up for download. I'll post a download link for this one as well as some of the other things that I have relatively soon. Uh, you could check the link in the description for this video to see if it's there. I don't know why it wouldn't be, but yeah, just go look and download it. Uh, and have fun! <laughs> uh, I'll try and get them ready for you guys. So, I'm gonna show you a f ship that I pretty much did almost finish. 
Uh, and I hope you guys can tell what it is. If you don't play EVE, you probably will not have a clue. Uh, but I'm going to fly over here and show you. There's two of them. One of them is the prototype version. Um, I do prototypes because you can't uh, relocate the core of a ship, which means you cannot... I, I just don't want to like put down the core of a ship and build a ship around it if I don't know. Like I don't want to have to take apart a ship just because the core was like one block off. I hate that type of stuff. So I don't want to deal with that, um, which is why I build prototype versions. But here, if you don't know what this is, this is the Eve Velator. It's a Galente ship, a Galente Velator. This is the rookie ship for the Galente race. It's one of four rookie ships. It is if you if you choose to be a Galente in Eve Online, this is the first ship you will get, and it is one of the smallest ships and probably the most useless ships in the game, um, aside from shuttles. <laughs> This is as small as it gets for EVE ships, pretty much. Um, and uh, I'll show you all of that, but here it is next to a drone. This is a drone. This is an accurately sized, or accurate, accurately scaled drone, sorry, can't speak. Um, next to uh, the Velator, and the, the Velator is supposed to carry two of these drones. And I can't really do that, there's not enough space uh, inside for docking ports to carry two drones. I could do it on the outside, but uh, to me that's kind of weird. I like the idea of the drones being inside. And on top of that, on the schematic, the official schematic for the ship, it not like an official schematic, but on the concept art for the ship, there's a hatch right here that clearly states Drone uh, Bay. And I cannot fit that drone inside that, so the scaling and things of the ships in EVE kind of don't work, but that's okay. I imagine, you know, maybe it could squeeze in there somewhere. Uh, that being said, I'm not going to bother. As much as I'd like to make it as accurate as possible, I cannot possibly do that simply because of that. Um, but yeah, I'm going to give you a tour. So with every single ship that I release, I'm also going to release the pod. If you don't know what the pod is, it's basically uh, how you fly the ship. You, you, throw in, you throw yourself into a pod, you throw the pod into a spaceship and you control the spaceship with your mind from the pod, right? So every single ship has a pod area or a pod built in where the core is. Uh, so if you dock the pod, and yes, you can fit it through these doors. I will, I will demonstrate to you that you can fit it through these doors. It's a little bit of a tight squeeze. It might get a little buggy, but you just have to understand uh, how to get it in and out. So you do that and look, you can fly it in and out. Pod accessible. Um, for all of you lovely capsuleers out there and you just dock it and you get out and you can turn on the gravity and walk around which is what I will do or you can fly it I'll fly it in a moment this is the pod room uh, which is where I just came from and this is the cargo bay uh, the cargo bay will probably be a little bit more compact than this but here's a whole bunch of engines and stuff and you know all that great shit here is the cargo bay door as well as the crew access hatch here's the actual cargo hold um, Right here is what I'm getting a general idea for how big modules are going to be. Uh, you know, it's going to be like a 3x3 cube or maybe a 5x5 cube. I don't know yet. But one thing that I realized when I was looking up the sizes of modules in EVE is that when they're put into a ship, they only take up 5 cubic meters of space. And if you don't know what that is, that's literally like that much space. And to me, that's a little weird because I don't think a big machine like this spaceship can be altered so much by something that is this big on the inside of it. That to me is just crazy. Uh, proportionally, it doesn't make sense. You know, like that's the size of an afterburner. Like the size of an afterburner is like 25 blocks. Well, I think an afterburner would be a little bit more than that, but okay. <laughs> it just it just seems a little bit ridiculous. Down here is a corridor, or would would be a corridor. Like I said, this isn't done. Um, it's going to be a little bit more compact on the interior, uh, simply because this is way too open for the insides of a ship. But um, down here is the drone bay. As you can tell, there's not enough room for a docking uh, thing in here. Uh, here's a general idea for how big uh, medium slot modules are going to be. There's some shielding as well as another maneuvering engine or maneuvering thruster uh, right there. There's some power. Uh, basically, all the power is around this area. I kind of figured that's where the power would be. Technically, this entire room should be filled with engines, but honestly, the engines are covered. I've already uh, managed to get a 2 to 1 ratio of engines to mass. 
uh, which is apparently the ratio that you want in terms of shipbuilding, just so that it accelerates the top speed. So, bam, it's already done. Uh, I don't even need to do that because Galente ships are known for being slow and just having good amounts of firepower and using drones. So, I don't know. <laughs> That's the thing. Um, here's the crew quarters. Pretty cool. I like this, uh, and we can close this and open this. Uh, a ship this size probably never has more than three people piloting it, so I figured a three-room or three-bed crew quarters was good enough. Um, right here we have the space toilet, right? Uh, because shitting in space is important business, and I am ready to accommodate all your space shitting needs. Uh, I have no problem with that. Uh, guys, got to do what a guy's got to do in space, of course. Here is the bridge. I love this bridge. I don't know how I managed to pull off a good looking bridge like this in such a small looking ship, or such a small ship in general, but I love this bridge. It's just so cool. It's so spacious. It feels so open. You can see so much from this little cockpit that you think you, you wouldn't think that you'd be able to see that much from a ship this small, but you really can and it's really awesome. Um, I have cockpit modules all over the place, I've gone a little overboard. There's one, two, three, just inside this place, and there's two more. Uh, like right there and right there. Um, I'm gonna turn off the HUD. You can also enter the ship from right there and get in the build uh, block uh, and then switch over to the pilot seat or whatever. Um, oh, that says airlock on it. That's cool. I did not notice that. I'm using the highest resolution texture pack right now so that you guys get the utmost detail. Um, in terms of the actual ship, uh, you probably, if you're an EVE player, you're probably sitting there saying that the ship is supposed to be gray. And the reason I did that is because, um, well, I wanted to be able to express all the different tones on the ship. And there was like a gray, and then there was a darker gray, and then there's like a, like a silvery gray. And I wanted to express that without making the entire ship gray, so I've decided that most of the Galente ships are going to have a lot of white hull. Um, so it's kind of different from what's expressed in EVE, but this is what you're going to get uh, here. Uh, just real quick, I'll show you some of the stats. Um, you can look at them real quick. They are, you know, right on the left side of the screen. Um, I have lots of work to do on this still. There's still turret hardpoints that need to be taken care of and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm going to fly it around and talk about a few other things real quick. Uh, there was one more thing I was going to say about this ship. I can't remember what it was. Shit, I don't even remember. Sorry. <laughs> um, like I said, it's not done, but I will be putting a link for download in the description, so you can get it right now if you want. Uh, and we're going to fly over here and I'll show you something else that I've been working on. This big cylindrical thing over here that you see is a LCO Sancha Junction. If you don't know what that is, uh, you don't really have to worry about it, because it's basically one of the smallest things I found in EVE Online that I could build that was floating in space. It's basically some sort of space station or uh, component for a space station system. Uh, it's like floating around ruins and uh, it's a junction which means that it relays signals or radio transmissions or something uh, to someone else or somewhere else. Um, and this is how big it is. It's basically, it's got a radio tower on the top that I haven't completed and there's a big F on the front in blue to tell me where the front of it is where the radio tower is pointing, but, um, or the radio dish, my bad. Uh, and I'll show you a picture as well, but this is how big it is. I just knocked that asteroid the fuck out of here. Get out of here, you piece of shit asteroid. Fuck it on my stuff. Um, anyway. <laughs> That's, uh, an LCO junction. LCO, Sancha junction. I have no idea what LCO means, but I, it's just something I wanted to build simply because I have not built space stations, so I kind of wanted to build stuff. And there, it's not done yet. But I'll show you when it is done. It's nothing too crazy, nothing too exciting. So, there, there's that. Uh, but real quick, I want to talk about some newsy type things and things with my channel. And you don't have to watch this bit, but um, I would really appreciate it if you did and left some feedback about what was going on down below. Um, so, uh, my StarMade videos, like ever, have seemed to gotten, seem to have gotten a lot of you know views. Uh, a lot of interest from the community. Uh, what community that is, I do not know. But um, I just know that StarMade is like a fan favorite on my channel for some reason. I don't understand why. Because StarMade to me is not as popular as other games. StarMade is not as well known to people as many other games are. 
Um, to me, it's just very strange that Star Maid gets so many, you know, hits on my channel. Um, Mushroom Fleet even saw my last video that I did on Star Maid and subscribed to me, and I subscribed to them, and holy shit, because I was just looking at Mushroom Fleet a few days beforehand. And, you know, to me, that's pretty awesome. Uh, I would like to get involved with those guys. It's just, right now, I don't have the time to, but... Um, if Mushroom Fleet is watching, whitelist my character. I'll type in my name real quick. It's Van Helsing. <laughs> and I'm sure if you don't know uh, how to spell that, you can Google it, and you'll find out exactly how to spell it, because it's based off of... The name is based off the character from that movie, and potentially the book. I don't know uh, if there's a book, but yeah, there's... There's that. That's my name, Van Helsing. Whitelist me on your server, please, and I will totally check you guys out. <laughs> if you watch my video, that is. Anyway, it's just interesting to notice that, uh, you know, all these people are interested in Star Maid, and I plan on expanding over into other space games as well. Space Engineers, I obviously have Starbound to finish. Uh, the whole plan with Starbound is that once I get to Sector X and I kill the last boss or whatever, uh, I probably am going to stop that series. I have other series that I want to do, one of which is DayZ. I want to play DayZ. I want to play it with other people. I don't know how to do it, though. I don't know how to play DayZ. I don't know how I want to present it to you guys. Is it going to be an RP thing? Is it just going to be a thing where I film me over the course of several hours of clips and, you know, a montage of stuff uh, and all that type of crap? I, I don't know how you guys want me to play it. Um, I'm willing to play it with other players. Uh, I'm willing to play it with Swaggy, which is a character from my Hat Pack series. He is an actual person. I didn't. I'm not just like making him up or something. Um, go watch that if you don't know who I'm talking about. Uh, but yeah, I'm willing to play all these games. It's just I, I would like some feedback from uh, other people to see um, what they want. I, blah, I don't know. Um, shit, I don't even know what other games there are to play. I plan on finishing Starbound, I plan on finishing Banished, uh, which have goals once I get uh, like a thousand people in Banished and get, you know, a decent looking town, that series will be over. Once I get Sector X in Starbound, that series will be over. Um, if you want me to continue those series, I'm totally down to do that. I, I just don't know. Um, what else is there? What else is there? Uh, if you're wondering about these Star Trek ships, they're not mine. I have nothing to do with these. That being said, I have made this Heron, right? This was a prototype. It actually turns out that even though I did not, like, make this with scale in mind, it turns out I was really close to the scale of an Eve Heron, which is kind of scary. This is how small an Eve Heron is. I thought it would be a lot bigger simply because of how tall it is, but this is pretty close to how big an Eve Heron is. Uh, so, yeah, there's that. It's actually a little bit bigger, if I'm correct. I think it's like 70 meters long, this one, and the actual size is like 69 meters long. Or something like that, I don't know. I'm a little bit over the top um, in terms of size. But, yeah, there's that. So, uh, pretty soon classes will be over for me, and I'll be able to spend a little bit more time on my channel. Uh, I'm getting channel artwork done by a good friend of mine. And, God, what else? I might even have a website, but I highly doubt I'll get it hosted anytime soon, or if I'll get it functioning anytime soon, but there's that. Not that, you know, I expect a lot of people to be checking that out. Uh, but yeah, all sorts of stuff is happening, and I'll be able to uh, spend more time on content and regularly put shit out as well. Uh, but definitely to get back to me on the Daisy stuff, and um, that's pretty much all I had to say for this episode. Uh, thanks for watching. I don't want to say comment, rate, favorite, subscribe. I don't know why, but I just don't want to. Also, it's like 3.40 in the morning. I'm going to go have some ice cream. Bitches can deal with it. I don't know. <laughs> uh, have a good day, and I'll see you guys later. how much progress I really made but uh, I have to say that I'm kind of stopped working on it and I'll tell you why basically uh, when I set out to make all the Eve ships the one and true goal that I had when it came to that was making accurate life-sized well not life-sized but um, accurately sized 
EVE ships, proportionally correct, and really cool, uh, fully furnished, uh, ready to go. Hello once again YouTube, Chris the Nightbringer here bringing you some StarMate action. Holy shit, I got some stuff to talk to you about today and I have some other things uh, about newsy type stuff that I'll be throwing at your faces soon. So, uh, to get started, uh, as you can see I'm in front of the Venture. Uh, pretty damn cool uh, if you ask me, uh, because that is fucking cool. Don't, don't question my judgment of whether things are cool or not. I, I will behead you. Um, not really though, because, I mean, bed hanging's pretty cool and all, but I'm not going to behead you because I need you to watch my videos. Uh, so, <laughs> fucking tangent there, holy shit. Um, here we can see the Venture. Uh, I don't know if I've really worked on it since the last video. I definitely did a few things, but I like damage, uh, boosters or something. I don't know. Stuff like that, that just, you know, doesn't really make sense in Star Made because there's different types of damages and Eve and that don't really work in Star Made because right now there's only one type of gun and it might change in the future, might not. But the problem that I ran into was, oh, oh, real quick, let me just explain. If you don't know what a module is, it's basically anything you put on the ship to affect its go uh, into somebody's server because uh, they're all going to be up for download. That's really awesome. And then I came to the conclusion that I also wanted to make all of the modules for EVE ships. Not every single one, because in terms of Star Made mechanics and EVE mechanics, the two don't cross and fit each other exactly, so not all of the modules will be um, working. Things like, you know, EM wards or, you know, kinetic.